Hello my friends, I'm very excited to see you again in my home art studio and today we're gonna kind of uh, gather all the knowledge what we've got from my pre previous classes and we will do some training uh, in songs, in our speech, and in art, uh, a little bit different but it's still written and it's important to follow that uh, when you create your composition that is going to be interesting and uh, the people will be attracted to that composition and they will see you more as a professional art artist. I even have this shirt on me which just has the interesting reason on it. So it's all this color box so in particular order so that it creates some uh, design on it. So what we're going to do today, we will create the street. Uh, if you're not from the big town as me, because I'm from Moscow and it's in Russia, the biggest city and uh, it's the same size as in New York. Uh, so for me it's easy because I still have my memories about what kind of rhythm uh, houses they have and how the streets light out. Uh, if you're from the smaller town, it's not a problem because every town, even the small town, has the uh, street. The main street, the Broadway, which is, has houses next to each other. It might be half commercial buildings, um, half dwellings. Uh, and uh, I think that it's not going to be a problem to imagine and build and reconstruct that from your mind. We will try to do the very simple task we're gonna have the one side of the street not the street which is goes all the way uh through the whole like the whole street to horizon we're just gonna make a little portion of it small portion which is gonna be few houses only for your inspiration i will show my favorite city in the world uh, which is I live for 18 years that's San Francisco and uh, this beautiful gorgeous uh, piece of the photography which is I got from the magazine showing the uh, one of the most favorite uh, for visiting uh, tourist visiting uh, streets uh, and Scott uh, and it has all this interesting Victorian houses which just goes next to each other and they create the interesting uh, uh, unforgettable view of old Victorian uh, street. Um, that's not going to be exactly the same uh, everywhere in the old part of the town. Uh, but there was a significant about this picture because it has also on the back, it has the modern uh, downtown of San Francisco full of modern uh, high scrubbers and they actually have the rhythm too. So it all looks interesting uh, only when the smaller building uh, change the higher building uh, and it goes uh, a little bit different in the shape and it's a uh, rectangle or it's square or even uh, like uh, that Bank of America tower pointy or the um, Chrysler building for instance in New York. Uh, I just want to show you also we'll see the street or uh, maybe you're gonna make a little sketch of it and then uh, painting that at home so because it's something something capture your attention like the interesting shapes of the roofs or the beautiful windows or something or the interesting entrance in the building or it might be coffee shop on the bottom of this building or something interesting that you really really want to capture and show later to your relatives or just to leave it you know as a memory uh this street right here this is from the euro and this is most of the town uh in cities in europe look like it's always the buildings which is next to each other because the uh, price for the land in the cities was so expensive that uh they don't want to waste any uh <laughs> any little dime or you know just a little centimeter or uh of the of all these beautiful town streets so, and they just build the buildings next to each other and they have businesses coffee shops or stores on the bottom that's the traditional look of the uh, older cities in europe like amsterdam or um france or austria or germany that's how they looks usually and they have like three stores buildings or two stores or sometimes four uh, same kind of style was in san francisco uh, before the fire and then they tried to re-establish the similar look of the building so what we're gonna do we're gonna play with that interesting reason 
uh, of the buildings uh, and try to recreate the street uh, from our memories. Anything works. Uh, any um, particular memories you have or you can just get some photography and use it for your picture. I'm just gonna make the sample picture just for you to show what exactly I, I wanted to learn from that so uh, let me use the pencil this time because with the building which is gonna have the triangle shape of the roof like that Victorian house I showed you before and then I'm gonna put next to it a little bit higher building just maybe one more floor up in the same rectangle a type of the roof and then here I will make uh, the building with the straight just a rectangle shape without pointy roof just like that just a simple one I'm gonna have a little bit of roof right, right here and then I will because this building will be uh, not that tall I have some space uh, on the, uh, on the, behind that building. So I'm just going to put there the building which is will be connected to that one but it will be taller and it's going to be uh, behind that. So and it's going to be just rectangle with the small roof like that. So then uh, I need something behind that uh, building too because just to connect them together so like that. So it will be another building there. We don't worry about this too much. It's like a hills behind the bigger mountains. They just stay there on the horizon. So next building will be, um, I'll just uh, look at those ones. This is where I start from this quarter because this is kind of our point of counting and point of uh, kind of compare these buildings to each other and find the right rhythm on them. So I will do another building. Uh, it was triangle roof but it's gonna be uh, a little bit smaller than that one so just like that and I, I would not make it that wide as this one just a, a little bit less wider and more narrow and the last one on the side I want to do it's kind of medium size between this ones with the pointy roof that's okay they can be next to each other and uh, maybe I will put another rectangle building here behind and and maybe tree here and maybe taller building right here just to finish the composition this is gonna be the tallest building right here it's almost the same tall as this one and um, this is gonna be the tallest from pointy buildings the triangle one there will be the small and those ones will be the medium size and one will be behind and the small will be here in the front so this is just a composition from top of my head whatever I come up with right now just for example lining for my picture so that I know what to follow so I will highlight this building and I like this one. Why I need the stronger drawing on this picture? Uh, because we will color like a color book this picture and we need the right outlining on the shapes so that we don't get the wrong color in the wrong spot. And then I can kind of like a little bit just to be more professional, er erase the wrong lining just to leave uh, less 
pencil on it because usually uh, acrylic colors are not that translucent but for instance if you use the watercolor all your drawing will be shown on the pictures usually because the watercolor they can cover your pencil drawing usually unless you use the white color which is actually acceptable for the watercolors too you can use the white color from acrylic uh, because it, if it's hard to show some white spots you can use that it's okay it's just gonna be the blend technique not the straight watercolors but the blend technique so what i'm doing i'm just making uh, my houses look a little bit more awkward And here will be like the bigger arch with the flowers part on um, front. This is one. Here, I just want to go with some balcony here, kind of like an artist studio probably and here will be just a rectangle windows flowers and maybe here will be another row of the windows here it doesn't have to be store so we're just gonna have a nice beautiful entrance here and a few windows on the side that's gonna be enough that's our tree maybe some tree will look to, uh, uh kind of behind that building a little bit and that's gonna be the bigger building right here with the little tiny windows and um because they this house is really really far away so i don't have to worry about that too much so this is our street so we're gonna get the pedestrian side right here and that's it just the black holes in the building so this is gonna give me some ability to put some lights in and make the play with the colors and make them look nice so what i'm gonna have i'm gonna have the purple color mix the purple blue and red as we did for mountains before and i will add a little bit pink in that because this is not that dark of an evening it's kind of between the condition of the day kind of dim conditions of the day when it's getting darker or kind of in the winter around 5 on the evening 5 p.m so and this is going to be our beautiful sunset time close to the night time because we're getting this a little bit more purple than the sunset colors And we're just going with the medium size of the brush. If you hear noises, that's my cat. She just getting curious about what I'm doing and running around. So this is my sunset colors. lighter colors for the closer to the smaller houses area because it's still 
kind of had some light there. It's closer to horizon line, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter. And uh, with my last uh, layer, I will get some blue uh, with light pink. I'll just attach the last part of the sky here with that nice light lavender color. Kind of goes closer to the sunset condition. And here, by the building, I add some more intense color, let's see. So, because it's closer to the top, and we always know above your head, it's always darker colors on the sky. And this is it today for the sky. And we can wash our brush. And that's going to be the fun part now. We're going to color our buildings. And the buildings can be very colorful. Colorful as in this picture, for instance, they has all different colors. Don't hesitate. Just play with that because this is kind of the town of your dreams. Street of your dreams. And the colors shouldn't be boring. They have to be interesting. So don't go too wild with that, but we can make some nice color. I will start with kind of burgundy color, which is very typical for the bricks houses. I will add that black and red and create that burgundy color shade. Just like that. And I will start with this building. For some reason, I feel like I use this color for this building. As I said, we're using the evening condition. And uh, we use the windows uh, for... We're going to use the lights in the windows. Uh, so we're going to make them, them shining not the dark dots as the on the daytime for instance windows look like so we're going to add some sparkle to them the same building not going to have too much of uh, varieties of colors this is just going to be the color of this building and you uh, will color is almost the same we're not going into the different details for this house our task just to give it the color to keep the whole composition going now you're an architect of your picture and you decide how your building will lie out and what kind of shape of all the uh, windows you're going to have. So this is all composition. And uh, in between of some windows, I didn't get enough color. Sometimes when you use your brush, uh, just the uh, other way, like make it a little bit more flat and goes with the little bit of topping on your brush is gonna make not the wild big strokes but just a little tiny one even with the bigger brush you can make the tiny strokes okay. burgundy building next building i will make kind of dark blue almost gray because I use blue and uh, black so this is gonna be my next building right here
you have to be very careful not to cover the windows in this um, coloring because when you kind of get too fast so you might just cover the window colors and it will be hard then to put the lights in your building because the yellow as we know it's very gentle color it's you really easily uh, overcast that with the darker colors so just don't uh, cover your windows please so there is no problem with covering that up later but it's up to you if you really want the dark window so you don't have to worry about the color of them coloring the window with your building color so we'll be all right so this is my building next building and they're gonna do the next one they're gonna make the orange but darker orange like more suitable for house orange and uh, how I'm gonna do it I'm gonna add the black in it so that's gonna be my dark orange I guess sometimes a different brush to um, top the uh, lighter color so I don't have to use a lot of time to I'll wash my brush in that point. So what I did, uh, I did um, kind of browny orange color. And that would be very suitable for my house. It's almost like a clear br uh, brown color. With the little tiny amount of red in there, just in color. Just like that, and we're almost done with that. And this is my brown building. Next, I will use the gray color. First of all, I'm gonna get my white, and then I will touch a little bit black. And here it is. This is our gray color. It's easy 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 to do it just two colors <clears throat> two they don't call them the professional artist colors because <clears throat> this is just a white and black um because they don't have the intensity of the color it's just helpers i can call them helpers they're still colors i guess in a certain point but um they they just don't have the intensity and just just do kind of colors and they help you to make your colors better <clears throat> lighter or darker it depends if you put black or white some artists don't even like the black color they never use it for their compositions some people don't like white because they think this has become a little bit soapy their colors so i think that it's nothing wrong with using them so that's why I recommend you especially on the first kind of years of your creative learning of the painting or to use them because they they will be comes handy for you for getting some extra colors and um, deliver your message and accomplish your tasks so this is my gray kind of give them away my rubber band so I'll kind of lose it up first I think uh, we will talk about this separately because I even dedicate the whole entire lesson to gray color uh, because uh, as a professional artist they say is a uh, better you operate with gray the better artist you are so it's so interesting that the black and white is not real colors and their mix their baby it's the one of their useful and significant colors and i will tell you why later i just don't want to give you too much information for the beginning of your lessons and this is for my gray building
will be enough. So I will use the gray to create another color based on that. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of yellow in that. And that color I will put a little bit of yellow and mix it very, very carefully. So this is going to get just an interesting shade of kind of grassy color on a very, very cloudy day. So some grass in England maybe, some very, very overcast weather most of the time. So, and I will use this color for my that little tiny building in the middle has the Victorian inspiration and then some French style building maybe nothing specific and just um, building I want part of here because it's suited by the rhythm of the sizes it's suited that well building and then I will use my brown and we'll add some blue in that and mix it well. And a little bit of yellow in that. This is my brush helper. It's always that I use for adding some colors. That saves some time for mixing. So this is gonna be my color, next color for the building behind right here. Emerald color, because we use um. Uh, basically a uh, yellow and blue on it but to the shade of brown so that's not that dark because buildings usually has the very nice uh, attractive colors they don't get to be very dark if um, the building is painted so it's usually very nice and kind of lovely light colors that's what we try to do make it looks nice it good together so i think that um this is good enough for this building and then i want to put some light orange color, color for this building so i'm just gonna mix another set of orange color and we can use them later for something else so And I will get a little bit of that burgundy color in that. So just maybe just make it a little bit darker, not that bright. Because we're going to use the brighter colors for the lights in the houses. So we don't want like two bright colors for the buildings. And this is going to be our orangey building. Kind of brick color, pretty much. Yeah. You see that color in your loft. In, if you're interested in the architect style, so the loft is one of the interior style which is, has the bricks in on that interior, and that's the brick color. When I was uh, saying uh, when we start, so we're going to talk about rhythm today, and uh, still using the uh, complementary colors. Uh, exactly what I'm doing now because the blue and orange they complementary so that house looks nice. Uh, green and red the complementary so the shade of uh, red nice with green. And um, this colors they just helps to finish the composition. Uh, they not complementary but it's not always happens that you have to put complementary colors next to each other but they can be present uh, on your picture anyway so I will come up with the color for that and I think that this one can be a little bit bluish so 
so kind of just will be the help for this bull building but I'm gonna make it because it's so far away I'm gonna make it lighter I have some hint in that the white color building there and uh, one more building over there I want to make light because it's kind of far away and it's going to be too dark it's going to be just too much of the bright um, stain over there so I, I just add some yellow in my gray and slight orange in there so kind of we're creating light <coughs> excuse me orange color not enough maybe a bit more yeah just like that and yellow they complement each other so the sky will be complemented by this color and that will be our little trick to kind of highlight the sky and have a nice light spot on our picture on the very very far away layer and now I think that we can do our trees right now and we can choose the summer so then we're gonna have the darker green on this uh, two uh, trees because it's evening so then we're gonna use the very dark green i will make it with the blue black in a little bit of hint of yellow so this is going to be my trees and they will be dark because it's evening time and all these leaves uh, will create just a basically just a shape not too much of the leaves on it and branches but just a nice rounded shape for this tree if we can very carefully go around the houses and finish that and the other tree trees are has characters every tree is significant and doesn't look exactly like other one like a people animals they all have the unforgettable interesting unique shapes so what i'm doing now i'm trying to create the different shape for this tree about trees we're going to talk on different lesson we're going to have the specific lesson dedicated to trees <laughs> but because it's such a big topic and a lot of landscapes has them i want to talk about trees separately we just now just touch that subject with a few words uh, just to kind of explain what i'm doing on the back what this mass of green is so this is my not a tree but i tried to make a different character for that too and uh, maybe I can use a little bit of lighter shade of green and make some little baby tree somewhere over here with the lighter shade maybe somewhere here and there will be this two trees Maybe that's the central part here. Yeah. Who knows? And so will be some tree on the back. That's enough. And we'll wash our brush. 
And I want to do the pedestrian part right here. So then we cover that emptiness over here and we're going to work straight on windows. That will be fun. Uh, for the um, pedestrian part, of course, it's going to be the dark gray. And for that, I will use black and slight amount, a very, very small amount of white. And I use a little bit of this uh, purple, which is left over from the sky, just to make that gray not that boring. And add to that hint of the in shape. So, because that concrete right here. And this is for our street car, the concrete which is buildings are standing on. I make a little bit more purple by this gray building. So it's not going to be similar, the color is not going to be lost in each other. My street level. I'm just going to leave that white part here because uh, I don't want to put too much of concrete. But you can put more stuff on this part. You can like, you know, create the... Um, maybe little tiny people there walking if you feel comfortable to do it uh, or you can just put some cars or a bus on it so because I just don't want to put in this detail so that they not going to take extra time for us to finish our work but feel free to do it if you want what I'm going to do now I'm going to change my brush and take that brush which is I used to take the yellow color before. So I will clean the spot on my palette or you can wash it. I'm just going to clean that right here because I need the clean spot for yellow. And you know how I'm always very careful about not mixing the light colors with the dark ones. So I will clean my spot for yellow to get the beautiful light yellow for the lights in the house not every uh, every light will be this color but some of them so i'll just randomly will choose where i put this light and it's written so you don't put two same colors in the same building next to each other you're kind of trying to uh, a little bit make some varieties in that so for now this is going to be my yellow colors and then i will use a little bit of orange very bright orange for my building light so i will use the orange for this window for this window Next to it, right here, and right here, and maybe some of this will leave it there. And then I will put some pink uh, in the windows because sometimes the light can be lighter. It has a different shape. It depends on the lamp. Whatever a lamp you have, that's the color you're going to get of the light shape. Well, play a role in your light cover uh, windows with some lighter pink color. Just choose them. Wisely, don't put them in every window, just, you know, use some other color later. I will use some blue, like a light blue. Sometimes it's like a LED lights and they look kind of bluish. And 
and some of my lights can be dark purple because that's gonna be low light in that windows it's gonna be just a dark windows and that can happen still not everybody at home so that's what i'm gonna show i'm just gonna show that some houses don't have anybody there i make this color a little bit warmer than the sky so then it's not gonna look that uh the house just has the front carcass and doesn't have anything behind so it still will be some other color see and that's gonna be no that doesn't work no this one this one here have it and uh that's it for now now i'm gonna get like really really bright yellow for my shops and coffee shops they usually because they attract customers they will use the lighter colors for their shops and stores so i'm gonna have here the bigger window cover with this light that so that's not gonna be the same as the next one and uh, for this store i will use that light few windows here because the lights in the windows our picture become more alive and that's the result i'm gonna get with painting windows so uh if it's gonna be just a day time they will be more boring so that's why i decided to do the evening condition and make our windows are more attractive because the as i said the lamps in the house can be different shades of color they might be more orangey or more yellow or sometimes the lights are spread it in the windows differently so some of the spots are brighter some of them darker or they have shades and um for instance they have curtains on it so we can use that it's all about the interesting details in your picture. And the bigger uh, windows are usually have the brighter lights. And some of them will have just a little white spots on it because of this is like the way very bright light in the place will create almost white light it's in the store so then you can see what they have and that's the kind of commercial attraction for that buildings is their brighter lights and I can get a little bit more orange for my window. For some windows. It's few, few left. So I'll get the more common yellow instead. Just to cover the rest. the roofs uh, on the tops of the building so i will use uh, some brownish orange color which is i had from the building for the roof on one of the buildings right here and i will have the highlights on the brown color this building right here the darker roof I will put on another building with more darker color and this is a kind of, kind of metal color so 
Uh, some of them have the clay rules and another one can have the metal rule, which is almost bluish grayish color sometimes purple but since we have the sky purple so we don't want to put the sky and the roof in the same color so i think that i can also use this blue color for gray blue for this roof This one, I will have the clay roof on that because it all looks nice. It's again, it's about written in sizes and in colors, so it's all about the right written for colors and shapes on your composition. Okay, and this house will have the lighter roof, so because it's all dark on the back and the house is dark so i will use the lighter colors for the roof on that uh, building another building right there far away i need more color for the roof but it farther building over here oh it's in stay um this rubber band so i can use it for you know a chimney on that uh and uh, i need another color for this roof right here i will do it like a dark brown Okay, so this is it. This is for my roof for this building, except this one. And that one I want to have the brighter roof, like orangey color. It's um it's gonna be the entrance in the houses. So some of them can be gray and um, not, not too attractive because we don't want to compete with windows. So the doors are, will be more modest. Imagination. Which color you want to color your doors in. Uh, it's kind of for, for you to decide. It's up to you. So I just only ask you to not do like really, really bright peacocks color or the house details because usually they have very suitable light colors and it just suit everybody's taste they don't scream like brazilian pirates <laughs> and this one can be blue and another one right here i think this can be kind of light purple This color will be good for connecting the sky and uh, with the color of the house. We don't use a lot in this picture, so it's not going to compete with another one next to each other. And I use this color a little bit for some windows. It just doesn't have lights. It 
if they still come away in the cocoon so that some cause them half-life And I still have this house without some light, so we're gonna wash my brush very carefully and get some light yellow. I guess it's more orange for another one of those. Right here, doesn't have a color. Windows, which is not that bright because, like we spoke before, the color of acrylic colors they're not always that bright after when they dry so you kind of kind of need to watch that so now i kind of grabbed um, a little brush the tiny brush and use this for just highlighting some balcony details and i'll kind of finish up with whatever i have right now to decorate your picture with some outline if you don't feel comfortable to do it, just leave it as it is. Um, nobody will judge you too much. But um, you can easily, easily um, spoil what you did with some black outlining, which is I'm doing right now. But if you feel like you will be right doing that, yeah, why not? So just be careful. I don't need to be upset uh, when you spoiled your outlining on the balcony or give too much of the dark color on your picture. It will be sad because you work so hard to um, make the beautiful picture and I don't want you to feel like with the few strokes of this dark color you can easily spoil your work so but because I put this balcony here I just kind of feel that I should do it but it's not necessary as I said and they give it kind of breathe the life in it so it's a lot of temptation to still do it even if it's not easy But this brings some life in your picture. And I will use also the dark blue outlining for some of the windows. Not all of them, of course, but just for some, which is like really close. And I need to, uh, to make the pointy uh, end of your brush, you kind of like really brush it up over the plate. And then you can done so basically uh, now i'm kind of drawing with my brush just uh, adding some details to my picture some highlights to it it doesn't have to be perfect because um that's not what we doing right now we're not doing the perfect picture we are doing the our training and our training was today to kind of conclude and put together all our thoughts about um, the complementary colors and also rhythm in our picture. This is why we did this task uh, to um, work with the rhythm of this different buildings and kind of make it interesting and attractive. Create a beautiful evening somewhere in old town.
or highlighting in a drawing with the brush. Uh, make your work a little bit more graphic. I don't know if you uh, like to see that on your artworks, but this is one of the approaches. So some artists, they like to add some graphics and even work with different medias to uh, add that to their works uh, so that they are going to be more specific because some of the acrylic colors they're not that bright so and then when you use some highlights with the different medias for instance uh, you can highlight your work so and add a little bit graphic elements in it so that's just add some details to it and some interesting elements in your work and it, ha it doesn't have to be the uh, designer architect approach approach for this picture because we not doing the uh, project for architect architect firm we just um making the picture um and we have the specific task for this picture which is not include um the particular details of the buildings uh, because these buildings were not painting from the nature uh, from uh, outside a drawing or photography what we're doing we're just um, painting this from our imagination and that's why I uh, strictly don't want you to work with some particular sketch or a particular picture or photography of the particular street because then it's gonna get uh, deeper in details trying to make your street look like on a picture but our task was just uh, concentrate on uh, details um, of uh, our building as the shape and uh, try to uh, put them in the right spot uh, as engineers and architect of our picture not just to copy some existed uh, composition of the building so that's why our task was uh, different so that's why I didn't require you to use the particular picture um, of the um, any town you know or your town or copy some other artist work so we just accomplish this work on our own using our imagination and train your imagination is really good for you because then you um kind of abstract from what you can see around and you kind of look in yourself in um create your work based on your experience and it's good because that just bright your imagination and bright your life experience highlighting and i believe so you already see buildings in your life so everybody who is trying to work on this task now they have in their mind the images of how streets can look so that's why it shouldn't be too complicated to put few uh, buildings together for this composition for you. You can copy what I did, but I recommend you to uh, practice maybe more, but um, put your buildings in that unique order you want. So, and just consider what I consider, uh, the different shapes uh, lie out together. So. The bigger buildings are next to the uh, smaller buildings and um, they're going to create the interesting look, I promise to you. And uh, farther buildings, they will be so far away that um, don't put too many details in them because then it kind of will come closer to you and we don't, you don't want that happens because they should stay there on the back like when we did mountains that was the same kind of task to um, bring up the mountains 
in, on the front of you and put behind that one which is far away. That's what we did. And same kind of thing we're doing now because we don't want that buildings which is far away to come closer and jump over the buildings in the front. Because if you bright them up or put extra details, that's what's going to happen. We don't want that to happen. A white spot on my picture and we will be done for the day. This is going to be um, horizon line right here. It's not actually horizon because it's far away, uh, almost on, uh, close to the top. So, but um, I just don't like that sky be empty without color because it's kind of made that roof flying somewhere, not attached to the building. So, you have to put the sky behind that. So, the empty spots kind of disturb that and here it's just an empty spot from the rubber band from before okay so this is done and now just with the concrete on the front that gray color gray purple is color if we want to contact it to the buildings to finish our stream And uh, just a last look on our picture and we will see what else to add. Uh, I think that that building uh, over here doesn't have the sign. We can add the sign here. And the gray building on the side lost a little bit of house space here. When you start to work, sometimes um, the shapes are not that straight looking, so uh, you can always finish that later when you're done with the shapes of the neighbors to that color. This building doesn't have the entrance, but you can give a feel of the not present by the tables. It's a front building, it has to be more detailed. And the green building behind needs some correction too. And I, think, I guess we can stop right now because our task is done, we finished, and what I want to just tell you right now is that with this artwork, the city lights, we're going to finish the first model of our lessons, uh, and next time we will talk about graphics, uh, so that's another uh, interesting way to express yourself, to use the graphic materials. And then we will come back to painting again. Thank you so much for choosing my lesson and see you next time.